Dr. Raj Shekhawat. I'm from New Zealand. I'm a clinical audiologist by training and today I'm sitting in Taipei, Taiwan attending the 12th uh, Tinnitus Research Initiative Conference. And with me I have uh, Dr. Winnie Shley and Professor uh, Berthold Langwood with me. And um, guys, today we'll be talking about the updates of what is happening in tinnitus field and what are the highlighting features for you for this conference. So let's start with you Winnie. What do you think is the uh, most highlighting thing for you for the 12th TRI conference? Oh, first of all, the highlight is that we have um, Tinnitus Hub here um, to do lots of interviews and lots of recordings. I think that's that's wonderful because uh, there's so much going on in the Tinnitus research field uh, now in the last years. And I think it's important for Tinnitus patients to know this. And uh, having these interviews here, that's a perfect chance to, um, to send it out there. Great. And what was your highlight, first of all? So my highlight is lots of new people in the Sinitus field. Um, for the first time, TRI hosts a conference in Asia. And we have many guests from Asia presenting their research. We have many young people here. So we have a nice interaction between established Tinnitus researchers and new people in the field. And um, I'm very happy to, to see this. Perfect. Just adding on to that, uh, in terms of numbers, we have got around 450 participants from more than 30 different countries around the globe who are here right now in Taipei talking about tinnitus research and what can be done for tinnitus. So, um, Professor Bertel, I would like to ask you, what do you think is the latest updates happening in the area of tinnitus which uh, the patients and the public should be aware of? So I think um, we have completely new methods uh, entering tinnitus research, like data science, for example. Um, a, a big problem in tinnitus is that um, in many studies we see um, diverse effects. Some patients, patients benefit from treatment, others not. Um, overall, the study is negative, and we have to identify those patients who benefit from a treatment. And I think um, with completely new statistical methods, we are able to identify these, or we are better able, might be better able to identify potential responders. So we have seen one study here, um, where it was possible to predict treatment outcome based on the MRI scan before yes. treatment. So that's, um, and we, we see lots of data science going on, helping us to better understand the different types of tinnitus and to predict treatment outcome. That's really good because we do understand that tinnitus is such a heterogeneous condition, which means it's really difficult to find two people with similar characteristics. Everyone with tinnitus is different in terms of uh, uh, what they're perceiving, their loudness, their intrusiveness, how, what and how it's affecting their quality of life, etc. Et so really, what, what are your thoughts in terms of going forward, in terms of offering better management for people with tinnitus? What do you, you think could be the way forward to make it really, really good and relevant for people with tinnitus? I think the way forward that should be um, that we really categorize people, um, tinnitus patients in, in different uh, subgroups and to really then predict um, for each subgroup what, what would be the best treatment, um, what would be the best thing to do. And maybe it's not one treatment, maybe it's multiple treatments or a combination um, of, of treatments that, that would help them. And um, uh, this prediction, I mean, that, that would be wonderful. Just imagine. Um, you're going to a doctor, you get a uh, proper diagnosis, and then um, you already have a kind of a prediction of um, what will happen, which treatment um, plan is the best uh, exactly for this patient. Perfect. I would absolutely like to second that as well. And I think as a clinician, that's my experience as well. Different people respond to different treatment options differently. So, for example, if... Uh, if brain stimulation technique might help me, someone else may not get benefit from that, but they may respond really well to say hearing aids or a third person may get really mm -hmm. good benefit from different kind of psycho psychotherapeutical options. Yeah. So, so Bertrand, what are your views and what do you want to uh, communicate to the tinnitus community in terms of the future development uh, targeting for the cure for tinnitus? Um, so, I think what you mentioned is is, uh, is very true, and is, I, I think it's a main research direction at the moment. And to give an example, um, we were able to analyze data that were collected by by Tinnitus Hub of almost five thousand patients. And what we found out was that um, female uh, Tinnitus patients responded much better 
to all kind of sound related treatments. So that's already an information we got from the, from the patients and it was not known before. So it's just an example how the close interaction with, um, with patients is necessary in order to move forward with team research and also improve our treatments. Yeah. I think you have raised a really, really important and relevant point. I think public patient involvement is extremely important. I think gone are the days when research community works separately, isolatedly, and community and public were separate. Now is the time where each of these groups need to inform each other. So I think because considering tinnitus is such a subjective thing, it's extremely important for all the patients and all the clients to explain it really, really well and in detail to the research community or to the GP or to the audiologist for that matter, whom they are seeking help from. And that can probably help further. Any comments really from your side on that? I totally agree, 100%. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, thanks, Hazel. You, you cannot see her, so she's sitting right here. <laughs> um, thanks, Hazel, for coming all the way um, down here and um, for being so committed and um, investing your time and uh, coming here to do all this and to organize that. Yeah. Well, what, what, one, one last quick question I want to touch upon today is um, as, as TRI conference organizers and as people who are very actively involved in TRI, what are your views in terms of involvement of patients or how patients are important to what happens in the research community? Professor Boltzmann, want to comment on that? So, um, I think patients are most important, uh, should be most important for everything that is happening. So it's very easy that the primary goal of all our, our activities is to improve uh, the, the life of people who suffer from tinnitus. Mm -hmm. And um, in order to improve, to do this, we need um, the interaction with, with, with these people. Yes. So patients have, have to tell us what they need, what, what is the, um, what is the um, highest need and so we have to interact, we, we have also to explain where we stand, what are the limitations and what are the possibilities at the moment. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the best way to closely interact in order to move forward. But the direction um, has to be given by the patients. Absolutely. I think you'd probably like to close this on this quick thought. Uh, let's imagine when, when I often talk to the public about you know what I do, what my research is, I often get this question that, um, what is research community doing? Why can't you find a cure for tinnitus quickly? I mean, you know, um, is it that difficult to find a cure? There are so many people who are suffering. So what is your message to all those people who have this question, who are probably watching this video? What is your message on the behalf of scientific community to them, Vinay? Well, um, we're really working hard, um, but, but it's just a tough problem. And uh, there are many tough uh, health problems out there. And um, uh, like cancer research uh, that's going on for a long time and um, much more research is involved in cancer research but still there's um, there's no cure for it um, so um, that's just um, how nature is uh, there are some really really tough health problems and uh, i think tinnitus is one of these tough health problems um, you want to add anything to that at all um, yes i agree that tinnitus as a health problem has been neglected for decades but i think we are catching up now um, Tinnitus is more and more considered as a major health problem, and I think we, we can can use this situation because um, in tinnitus we have a kind of a very close interaction among researchers with patients, and I think the fact that there was such a need and um, there was a few things that were, were done motivated people to work more closely together. So I think the the way how we work is very different from the established fields. And also the interaction with patients is much more um, intense and much more productive. So I think our uh, our our research culture um, in the tinnitus field is really a very positive one. And um, I think we, we should try to keep this culture and, and move forward working together with patients, with um, clinicians, with researchers, with different disciplines. And I think that's the way uh, to be successful. Thank you so much for those thoughts. And I think based on my personal experience from the past um, almost eight, nine years, I have been coming to these conferences and I have personally seen the growth 
and the development and the similar topics, but the research is advancing with time. So we are also trying our best to make sure that this, these findings are also communicated to, uh, to the patients and the public as well. And for that, we are grateful for Genitus Hub for facilitating this process. And uh, we will keep in touch with all of you and repeatedly with time, uh, keep on posting on the updates. So thank you so much once again, and thank you so thank much you. for watching. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.